And up next, new evidence that the White House may have a truth problem. The Kelly file investigates a major about face in a story involving a member of President Obama's own family. That's right after this break. Don't miss this. The White House said in 2011, I believe, that there was no record of them ever meeting. Mm -hmm. And now the Boston Globe is being told by the White House, and I assume you can uh, elaborate here, that in fact they not only met, but they lived together briefly when the president was in law school. So how, how could you make that kind of mistake? We don't know. I, no. I'm with Fox News Channel. I just I have a very are, quick you, question. You come from you. heaven or hell. Please. Listen, oh. you don't have to get angry with me. I just have a quick question for no you. No question. Thank you. I know you've been in this country a long time. Do you? Yeah, I already called sir. They're going to come in. Okay, I just have a quick question I for you. I don't want no question. Listen. Well, that was Fox's Jesse Waters tracking down President Obama's uncle outside of Boston earlier this year. In 2011, Omar Obama was arrested for drunk driving, and it was discovered at that time that he was living in the United States illegally. At the time, the White House claimed that Omar and President Obama had never met because reporters were inquiring about the relationship. Now, they've done a complete 180. Trace Gallagher has a Kelly file investigation. Trace? In fact, Megan, when the president's uncle Omar was arrested for drunk driving back in 2011, not only did we first learn then that he was in this country illegally, but that's when we first learned that he was related to the president. In fact, when he was arrested, he was asked if he'd like to make a phone call, and he said, I think I'll call the White House. But the White House then told the Boston Globe that there was no record at all of the president actually meeting his uncle Omar. Then, this week in the Boston Immigration Court, Omar Obama testified not only had he met his nephew, but Barack Obama even lived with him for a short time. Now the White House says there was no deception. They just couldn't find any evidence to support that the president had met his uncle. It's unclear exactly what evidence they were looking for. Even though Omar Obama was mentioned in the president's book, the White House says there was no mention of them ever meeting. Today, Press Secretary Jay Carney pinpointed the actual problem. Listen to this. Nobody had asked him in the past, and the president said that he, in fact, had met uh, Omar Obama when he moved to Cambridge for law school and that he stayed with him for a brief period of time uh, until his, the president's apartment was ready. After that, they saw each other uh, once every few months while the president was in Cambridge, and then after law school, they gradually fell out of touch. In case you missed it, Jay Carney said the problem was nobody ever asked the president if he met his uncle. The White House says the president has not seen his uncle in more than 20 years. Uncle Omar, by the way, was allowed to remain in this country because of his good moral character. The White House says they did not intervene at all in that immigration hearing. Megan. Wow. All right. Joining us now, Trace, thank you. Mark Thiessen, who's a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and a former speechwriter for President George W. Bush. Mark, uh, they say nobody ever asked him, and yet they started disseminating information in newspapers like the Boston Globe without having asked him, according to the White House. Do you believe it? I don't buy that for a second. I mean, look, the president's uncle, who is in the country illegally, is arrested for DUI and says, I'm going to call the White House, and nobody goes and tells the president about this or discusses it with him in any way. I mean, that just, just stretches credulity. Uh, so, so, no, I don't believe the explanation. But if it was true, it would point to an even worse problem in the White House, which is that nobody brings this president bad information. It is a really hard conversation to walk into the Oval Office and say to the president, your uncle was arrested for DUI. It's also very hard to walk into the Oval Office and say to the president, the Obamacare website doesn't work. Or to say to the president, you've been telling Americans they can keep their insurance, but it's not true. You have to stop. So either they're not having those conversations or they're having them and telling and disseminating false information anyway. Either way, they have a culture there that disseminates and encourages dishonesty. If this was not true, if, if, if what they're saying now is not true and they did discuss it with the, with the president, then it's a bald-faced lie. I mean, then yeah. if he told them, I, I know him, I'm related to him, and I lived with him for a few years in, you know, before law school, then it was just a bald-faced lie. Is it naive yeah. to be, you know, saying the White House press office wouldn't tell us bald-faced lies about such matters? I hope, I hope it's, uh, the, that it's not a bald-faced lie, but then what it means is nobody's telling the president these things. Nobody told the president the website doesn't work. Nobody told him after he said 30 times, you can keep your health care plan. Nobody went to tell the president that's not true, 
I mean, they're, they're not doing their jobs. Is this, it's part of the job to tell the president bad news. Is this, you know, this didn't get a lot of coverage. Is this a, yeah. is this a story? It's a story because it, it, uh, on its own, it would be a one day kerfuffle, but it's in the context of a series of lies. I mean, this is a president who, this is an administration that lied to the American people about Benghazi. They lied to the American people about Obamacare and whether they can keep their plans. And now we learn that they lied to the American people or misled the American people about the president's family. And so you've got a pattern of, of, of misinformation coming out of this administration at a time when the president even himself admits he's fighting to get his credibility back. A majority of Americans don't believe him. They say he's not trustworthy or, dis or honest. They say they think he deliberately, a majority say they think he deliberately lied to the American people when he said you can keep your health plan. So if he wants to regain his credibility, this doesn't help. Yeah, it doesn't come out at exactly the right time. Mark, good to see you. Thank you. Feel better, Megan. Thank you.